got a mind to live right. I got a mind to live right. I got a mind to live right every day. Since the Lord saved me, sanctified me holy. I got a mind to live right in church. I got a mind to live right. I got a mind to live right. I got a mind to live right every day. Since the Lord saved me, sanctified me a whole day. I got a mind to live right. Church, I got a mind to stay saved. I got a mind to stay saved. I got a mind to stay safe every day. Since the Lord saved me, sanctify me holy. I got a mind to stay safe. Oh, I got a mind to press on. I got a mind to press on. I got a mind to press on every day. Yes, since the Lord saved me, sanctified me holy. I got a mind to press on every church. I got a mind to live right. I got a mind to live right. I got a mind to live right every day. Yes, since the Lord saved me, sanctified me holy. I got that mind to live right every day. God, you ought to thank for a mind to live right. Help! My God. Well, we thank of the night you may be seated. We give honor to this distinguished lady, Mother Stax. Glad for her. Pulpit, Mr. Dino. Amen. Pastor Wilson and all of you that came out tonight, we're glad for Jesus. Amen. Because I want a shot of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. Hope I shot. Glory to God. Hope I not now. Yeah. Oh, Lord. It's said to speed up everything in that body. Oh, by Shata. Hallelujah. And we behind time. Fooling around with these hypocrites. Folks don't even want nothing. You talking about run and they walk. Shut up and they talk. Come on here. Flesh go the opposite. And when you up there, it's a, it's a, it's a constant content. I'm putting more in you being saved. You want yourself. Come on here, church. I know what I'm talking about. It'll wear you out. You keep on sitting there and say, duh. <laughs> I'm trying to teach you how you duh. Come on now, we ain't no special ed case. Shouldn't be. Come on, church. We need a shot to speed up our understanding. We take it too long. How long will you be slow of heart? You didn't see enough to be running. I just telling the brother that took me, Minister Land. He drove for me. I thank God that there are people who are concerned about me. 
Amen. And he drove me. And I told him, I said, the land, I said, we have just one year in holiness. We should be knowing who we are, what God intended to do with us. Come on, church. Now here we're all in our class and here come new folks. Passing us up. We still in the second, third grade. Easy hurt. You ain't move if you can't take a rebuke. Y'all ain't getting no rebuke. You ought to been in mother's time. Mother boy, get up after you son. Cut you like a shredder. Come on here. Ain't no need of you looking like you ain't heard nothing. Maybe most of y'all happened. <laughs> you wasn't here. <laughs> Honey, class was hard because you had to go back the next night. Swell up if you want to. She'll bust you. Come on, church. I told her, I think it was yesterday, I said, Mother, I appreciate how you stayed on us. Didn't let off of us. When you slow, if you don't mind them that's knowing it, got to teach another class. You got to go to somebody else. That's what's been coming to me. Somebody else got to teach these folks that's too hard to learn. Not you. I say, help me, Jesus. I want to reach way down there and try to get them. That ain't your class. You know how much time it is for you to get them to be able to say, B, 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 B. I say, yes, God, it is trying. He said it because they're too slow to learn. See, one thing make you slow, you hear junk. If you're going to learn, pick up like God wants you to pick up, you can't pay attention to nobody's junk. So they'll call you on the phone and talk to you, and that make you slow to learn. You'll be in that same class. Come on, we're going to go to Luke. Help me, God. And I hope before the service out here, let me give you a shot of adrenaline. Honey, when they got to give you a shot of adrenaline, you, you know your heart didn't about to stop. They trying to revive you. The class is moving on. It's going to move on without us. You ain't waiting on us. We take it too long. Take it too long to forgive one another. Don't wait for nobody to come to you. Some of these people ain't never coming to you saying they're sorry. They did you wrong too. Luke 24. Jesus, this is rough again tonight. I guess I got to go home and do the same thing. I said, Lord. 24, 13. And some of y'all that God bringing in now, y'all can't take as long as we did. The last stage of a relay race, usually the fastest man is on the end. You don't have your slowest man on the end. God ain't going to have slow runners now. Come on. You got to kick. The last part of a long race, in order to beat your opponents, you better have some kick left. And I didn't see them physically and on the TV. When it comes to them last 30, 40 yards, Whoever got the strongest kick is the one going to win. They speed up every stride and get ahead of the person. Hallelujah. I said, God. I said, don't you see this thing on Harry Potter? Sweeping all across the land. 
bringing young folks in the mind of witchcraft. Imagination, fantasy, line it up to get books signed. You better not be in that line as well as you've been taught. It ain't no harm. It's just, honey, they're setting your kids up. Unsaved folks is fighting them. How come you ain't? You got to watch what you feed a child. You don't feed your child dirt. You had that table clean. You don't want them to get no bacteria. Well, watch what he read and watch what he look at. Poison his system. Won't have no respect for authority. Nothing. I said, God, we are at, we, United States is to be free, but not free for everybody to clown. In the Jewish days, them folks was burned and killed. We licensed the devil to destroy our own kids. I mean, I looked at them, lined up. And you little children just talking about Harry Potter going to have a sequel, going to have more than one story of the same crazy stuff. Now, some, if you don't mind, some child going to jump out of a window and think they can fly. Ain't no need of y'all. Y'all should have been saying amen. I hope none of y'all got your children on that mess. Come on here. From the way this amen sound looked like some of them bought it. Harry Potter. Get you some Bible videos and get them. That's where I do my boy. Get away from that TV, boy. Get, get, get one of them Bible videos. Read me a scripture. Come on, yeah. If you want them to be something, teach them. And watch what they read. Slip in, in, on the, in the room and, and listen. And see what they're looking at. Even some of them cartoons ain't fit for a dog. All these characters they got ain't looking like stuffed animals. They got shapes like women and men half clad. They encourage them to be disrespectful. You may be feeding your trouble if you ain't watching what your children do. Because some of them slick enough to close the door when they make the ch station change. You got to understand your brat's a lie. Don't be scared to say amen because they're sitting up here. You don't believe all what your child say or you naive and a little nutty too. <laughs> Care how long you ain't never caught your child in a lie. Don't mean he don't lie. Tell a lie with a straight, I ain't doing mama, mama Z. Honey, the devil trained you from birth to lie. And you don't need no other outside influence on your children when he's born with certain things. Help us, God. You ain't got to wait for him. The old oh, child, I don't want him seeing this and that. You got enough sexiness in your girl. It's there. You slip in on her, you'll see her rubbing her little hips and turning sideways. Why these parents ain't saying amen? Y'all ain't caught them doing nothing. You ain't prayed at all. Because if you pray, God let you walk right in and catch it. I caught mine. You'll catch them trying to be jazzy. You'll catch them cussing too. You better read because it look like they're slow to get this too. <laughs> Come on here, you're slow to believe that I'm telling you the truth, that you're raising the devil in your house. If you ain't praying that much, you ain't seeing nothing. When you pray, God will let you come in there when they think you sleep and got the TV on. He'll get you up and you go right in there. What are you doing looking at this? You ain't going to get that gift I was going to buy you. Uh-uh. 
Put that gift in your hands or something. Put that gift on that backside. I ain't going to buy you this. Don't eat dinner. Go to your room. <laughs> I ain't studying these judges. <laughs> if they light skinned, wrap the towel around their little boo boo and go to work. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Don't leave a mark. Go to work on their little boo-boo. <laughs> we used to say, sanctify their legs back. <laughs> Let them know, don't you do that no more. Come on here. Don't wait till they get nine and ten way up there. Then you want everybody praying. I want you to pray. For I told them, didn't I tell the other lad, I said, I feel like whooping these parents. God have to help me. They need to beat. Oh, yes, they do. Now you stop that. You don't say that no more. Here, you just woofing. You won't do nothing. <laughs> your, your children sometimes don't even believe you. They know you're a woofer. A woman came by the church on Thanksgiving. We had service on Thanksgiving. A woman came by and she said, she came to one of our services and I was teaching and one of the children at their church, big, big old boy, he was in the back doing something he had no business. I called him right there while I was preaching. I called him from the back all the way up to the front, the front rows. Said, sit there. And the woman looked and she went and told people, she said, you ought to hear this man. That man took authority. And she watched the child. The child sat there. So she come to church Thanksgiving because I had been in the service and she saw this happen. She said she went home and took authority over her house, in her house, and changed her atmosphere. She came Thanksgiving and tell us. She was glad that she had been invited because parents are not assuming authority and you should take it more, the women, more than the men. You the one almost died bringing a child in this world. Don't take nothing off of them. Catch them in a lie, let them get punished so they can remember. If you don't punish them, they won't remember. And when they whooped us, we had something to remember. Boy, you... They won't remember that. But let them get something where it's hard for them to sit down for hours. Through the night next day, I guarantee you, when they get ready to do that again, they remember them whips they had to sit on. Come on now. You can put them on there. They were real light skin. Just put your, wrap them. So I'm wrapping your baby. <laughs> Mama loves you. <laughs> and go to wah, 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 wah. Mama love you. Wah, wah. Come on. I don't want y'all slow on that too. Because you be too slow by the time you do want to whoop him, it's too late. What he said? And, and behold. Behold. Two of them went that same day to the village of Emmaus. Now look, these are men that had been with Jesus. And I was thinking about this the other day. I said, Lord, we can get so full of unbelief until we can be looking right at it and still ain't getting it. Right at it, right in the service. I told Elaine, I said, Elaine, these women should be changed over by being a woman in the home, doing their husband right. It don't take them that long. I asked him. He's a recruiter. How long does it take for you to go through basic training? He said, 12 weeks. Wait a minute, church. Did you hear what I said? 12 weeks.
three months. Then you should have all the basicness of holiness. Hallelujah. Now Mother Stacks got to take you through a crash course. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody going over there in Afghanistan trying to get ready. They're fighting a far different kind of war. You don't want no trying. Because them folks over there don't mind dying. You know if they get in a plane and crash into a building, they don't mind dying. So you're not fighting nobody that cares about living. Hallelujah. And we still taking a long time to give up different things. What people say to us and what, how they act toward us. And we still hold things. We want people to be so nice to us. You might as well say during ma Marine training, they brutalize them men. They destroy them. The image they had in the street is gone. They teach them you can't have your way. You're doing it Uncle Sam's way. You're going to wear what Uncle Sam wear? That's right. Your clothes? That's right. How you walk? No more slouch cat walk. Right. You got to walk like us. And you must honor your officials, your sergeants, your corporals, your lieutenants, your brigadier generals. You must. Yes. Hallelujah. Twelve weeks, not these ten and fifteen years that we have had. And they get you to teaching you about your weapon and you can clean it in the dark. Every part put it back together. Are we not? In more, in no more a crucial situation. Ain't hardly got a prayer warrior fit for a battle. Hallelujah. And you wonder why Mother Boyd says what she says? I told him, I said, you know what we've been doing? While the gospel being preached, we've been rebelling. I don't want to do that. As I said, don't take that long for God to shoot you and to make you. Look how long it took God to make Paul from the time he knocked him off his beast. He was a warrior within days. So much so they're trying their best to kill him. He was on the run. It don't take that long for you to give up your children, give up your family, give up your uh, 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 feeling for your things you own. I said, God, give us some soldiers. Transformed. Ready to take whatever it's got to take to be a soldier. If you say I got to be here every night, then I must be here every night. Anything in you rebelling against that is the devil. Taking too long. Take too long getting up to that bus stop. See, does it wait for you? You'll be running behind it, hollering. Then it ain't gonna stop. You know why? They got a schedule. If I slow up for you, then I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna Throw me off all the way down. And you can tell some of them bus drivers when they're off a of schedule, sometimes they don't even stop. Just be looking the other way. Zoom. Come on here. Just be looking the other way. They ain't stopping. And you barely get on that button. Already put it. Come on here. 
All of us that have, have rode buses know some of them that's behind schedule. They don't hardly stop that long. The last person hardly gets on that bus sometimes. Amen. In the world, time means money. And everything has to move at a certain time. And when you slow, you miss your time. You got to be rescheduled. That class may not be taught again for a while. Because the time that you ought to hide it, you let your flesh interfere. I said, God, speed us up. Speed us up. Glory to God, we that want to be saved, speed me up. Speed up my intellect. Speed up my understanding. Do something for me. Shun nobody shut Hallelujah. Speed up my heart. It's too slow. I said, yes, Lord. And God called through Mother Boyd paramedics, emergency vehicles in holiness. Ain't nobody in them emergency vehicles that worked in them two or three men teams or women teams is people that can't hear one another. Each one knows their part that they have to play. Each one knows methodically what to do. They're not getting in each other's way. We won't recognize one another's gift where God birthed us at. He gave some pastors, some apostles, some prophets, some teachers. I said, God, help us. Help us. Honey, when, when the men get shot out there in the wall, you got a certain amount of time to pull that guy out of harm's way. And bullets ricocheting everywhere. Medics get killed. That's right. You ain't got no time to fool with joking folks. People that's not sincere. They're not going your way. They're on a whole nother bus route. They're slowing you down. Watch who you run with. What kind of conversation do they carry? They're always asking the same question about the service. And they were sitting right there with you. I don't quite understand. Did you get what was going on? Drop them. <laughs> Sister, ain't you got the tape? But... You know, still, it's some things. Uh -uh. <laughs> You're not in the class. Uh, you have to tell them, say, did you look on the outside of your room? Because my number is four, 426. What number is yours? Because I don't think we're in the same room. It's showing on the same page. You don't need y'all sitting up here. Amen. Don't swell up like a frog. Amen. If you're slow, you're slow. Come on, God, give me a speed shot because I'm sick of myself. Yeah. You know yourself, you're taking too long. You wouldn't have went, how in the world would you went through high school taking these many years? Right. Don't allow your fall. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Fall. How many years you been in high school here? Don't look at nobody cross-eyed. Come on, yeah. There are people you turn on the TV that'll make you weep. Turn on the TV and look at them folks. Ain't had the kind of teaching we had. And see how many folks they're going out getting. 
You go year, two years, three years, ain't brought nobody to church. You know ain't no heaven waiting for you. Proverbs 31 said, let her works praise in the gate. What you think waiting for you? You don't believe in the God enough in yourself that you can touch another person's life and bring them in here? You're going to go by your shouting and your hollering and all these empty seats? Surely it's in vain. Amen. If you work at a job so many years and you say you saved, somebody from that job supposed to be attending your church if you the right example on that job. Don't pet yourself. He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Or what have you cooperated with that will help bring win soul? Can you work with other people? Are you faithful? Amen. I'm stirred, saints, because God is transferring these things to me. You got to accomplish something in your life. What if I'd have took you on your way to Pittsburgh, Hasburg? What do you have done? I say, yes, Lord. You don't want to just be going and sacrificing, going over the highways and byways and no fruit. He told me before I had a, a fellowship book out. I was flying on a plane. Don't tell me God don't tell you about yourself. He let me know. If you was to go, more or less, what do you have done? I saw it in a little dream. You know how you'd be on a plane, you doze off and go to sleep? If I was to take you, you ain't even got a book out. I didn't have a book out. We procrastinate. We put off today for tomorrow. We do it with fasting. We do it with praying. We do it with seeking God. We already get inclinations from God to lay on the carpet. But if you don't watch yourself, it's next month before you even try. What is all this mess that we put ahead of God? Now what if God decided I'm going to put your health off? I'm going to delay your health. I'm going to delay your blessing. I'm going to do to you like you do me. I told you to be slow to speak, to run your mouth. That's the only thing I want you slow in. I want you slow to react to what people say and how they talk about one another. I want you slow. Take your time. Pay attention. Prove all things and then hold fast to that which is good. Don't be so quick to say nothing. But I do want you to be quick to hear. Quick to hear what I say. I say, yes, Lord. Take us through the purification. Come on, church. We have error concerning the faith. And we drag it. We drag it. I told them in the tension when these beautiful men was alive. I told them in their meetings. I told them when it comes to the fellowship work, it cannot drag. I said, that woman is getting older all the time. I said, what do we have going for her? I know we're going, but what about her? Oh, by Shana. Every daughter birthed in. My God, it should be so that nothing is pulling from the church. The church exists, it's functioning, and yet there are committees and people working to take care of that mother without the church choking its neck. If everybody worked together like they should, it would be done. That's all I was telling them for the last 10, 15 years. And just drag, drag, drag. Hallelujah. And if we don't watch the seed of all that, it's still in us. Come on, church. Ain't no need of looking funny. You know, I said it. I said it and you heard me say it. 
Well, you know, I ain't throwing off. I said it then. That's, right. That's what believing the gospel is. You're not believing the gospel. Here. I can't work with you and you can't work with me. Hallelujah. I'm stirred tonight. See, if you'd had been there in Pittsburgh and fallen in Cape and no pain, just hit the deck. You look like you're in a cartoon. Is this happening to me? I know I was walking. I'm on the floor sitting down. I get back up. Hey, I ain't. I got to get back in the train. It only stopped for 10 minutes. It's got to go to Hansburg. I got to go back up these steps. I took my time, didn't stop. Went back up thinking that I was regaining myself. Got to the top, bam, down again. Paramedics was called. Them folks were right out there in about two, three minutes. There I found myself getting oxygen, no pain. Things can kill you, honey, ain't no pain. Don't think you're doing well because you ain't got no pain. Some of y'all sitting up here ain't got no pain and something's threatening y'all. And if God don't use somebody in the word of knowledge and discernment, come on, yeah. Cancer kills without pain. When you do stop feeling, you in the last stage. You better not go by these feelings. I'm all right. I feel good. That don't mean you good. Come on here. I didn't have pain the first sister. Like I, it was like someone was hanging over me and I, and I couldn't get my oxygen. Put you in that thing in the x-ray and you're running that thing all around your chest. Seeing two embolises in both lungs. Embolises in both lungs. So I thought it was in one. It was in both. And none of, nothing they gave me was dissolving. Whose hand was I in? Eight doctors. I asked them. They couldn't tell me that what they was giving me was moving it. I tried to pin them. They wouldn't do it. My wife was right there. Come on. Do you think God extended my life to come here and lie? Oh, my shy. When that circulation got too slow, it formed clots. And they formed clogs. Are y'all listening to me? When that circulation get too slow, It'll form, form clots and they'll form clogs. I didn't know that people that travel on the airplane that fly many hours are encouraged to walk through the plane. Because they know the hazard of blood clogs. Because of low or poor circulation. And some people are more susceptible than others. Come on. You sometime been sitting down in one place a long time and notice how you really got to stretch your legs and everything. Do you know why? Your circulation didn't drop. Too low. If you have bad circulation, you can develop cramps, knots. Then I come back. To Gary found out a Baptist preacher he died from it a year earlier I mean people younger than me 30 34 Minister Stacks called me and told me he had him in the leg and didn't know he had him and had to go to the hospital because if they move and go to the wrong place you're a dead duck I say, what are you telling me? If you fool around and let somebody put some junk in you and your love start flowing slower and slower to that person and you don't have that much to say, then you're going to form a clog and you're going to stop circulating, period, to that person. 
come on. I say, yes, God. Diabetes is known to have a cause to slow per circulation. He says, too slow. Get up and move. We got to get up and move in God. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Stop talking so much about what God told you and what you're supposed to be doing. You're not moving till you get up and start acting on what you have learned. And then laziness will make you slow and do nothing. Drowsiness will call, clothe a man, the Bible said, with rags. You know better, but you lazy. And laziness will have you slow to take care of business, to do what you should around the house, to do what you're supposed to do for God. Come on here. The fear of man will slow you up to obey God. Fearing what somebody will say, fear will slow you down. You got to make up in your mind. I got to obey God. I got to be quick to hear. Slow to speak and slow to get mad. Some of the things he wants you slow in. Hallelujah. I say help us Lord. The Bible said, I think it is in Nehemiah. But one of them chapters, the books, said the king's business require haste. The opportunity you have at the time is only for a certain time. Do you know that many of us is living in the same standard, going through the same perplexity of our income and our means and our situation simply because when God spoke, you didn't move on schedule, you could have been out of your mess, Anytime services been at your church and the power of God is falling and God is moving and you are slow to hear your deliverance, you are in situations, you are going through predicaments that you should have been out ten times. How many times did the bus come by Shalom to move everybody off the poverty level? You didn't catch a one. Come on here. Hallelujah. When God said, give that money, you slow. You're looking at everything you owe. And you ain't got enough money to pay for it. No how. What you, what, you, what you squeeze that dollar for? Let it go. You're broke anyway. Slow. Child. Edison. Yes. Holy Ghost said, give it to me. <laughs> Come on here. Amen. You were slow to give. And that make you slow to live. If you had a gave, God would have gave you a window. You should have been out of what you need. You know what I'm telling my older people? I said, who told y'all y'all shouldn't own property. I say, yes, I want you to tithe off that first of the month check. Give it here. Give me that money under that mattress. <laughs> I say, don't you come up with your Scrooge self, because Scrooge going to have a dream. <laughs> Y'all know the old myth. Scrooge had a dream about his I believe the saints should have a dream too. Come on here. Yeah. Slow to turn the money loose. You got more opportunity to win than anybody going to in a lottery line. You don't see it like that. You slow to see just who God is to you. Turn the money loose. See how you don't hear no amen? Look how slow the amen come. 
Come on, do you know what he said? Go to the end, thou sluggard. <laughs> oh, God. Called us a sluggard. You not only slow, you are sluggard. You don't see no ant move in slow motion. Not one ant. When one can't do the job, pull that crumb, pull that little piece of bread, you see two or three ants automatically, systematically, methodically get on the other side and help him pull it. If they can't get it in the hole, they automatically, systematically, methodically cut it and take it in there in pieces. Come on. Having no guide, no overseer, no pastor, no elder. I watched them this week in the water. It had flooded. All the ants got together holding on to each other and floated to the other side and help me, Jesus. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. When they got to the other side, had to go through a little mud and stuff. So they had to pull themselves out the mud. So the queen had to get out, had the wings. The queen was sort of stuck in there. The mother ants got there and became a tow truck and pulled the queen out. I sat up there in amazement. You know what, when I get through looking at some of them things on the TV of nature, I said, we ain't saved. No, we ain't saved. <laughs> we ain't saved. No, we ain't. <laughs> if we can't come up to the intellect of an ant and go get with one another and cooperate, we ain't saved. We're the highest thing God made. All of them got to the edge of the shore, Minister Dino, and they formed a bridge from the water to the ground. And it went over till everybody got over. Honey, if you don't get over, you don't get over. <laughs> I'm over. <laughs> if you don't make it, you just don't make it. I said, God, would you please help me? <laughs> I'm looking at ants, and they got that much sense. And we up there, ho, bo, 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 han, di, 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 di. Get through with all them tongues, they ain't going to even work together. If they ain't over it, they ain't studying it. Criticize, they ain't got no better idea. Put an ink spot on one another, mark one another. Yeah, I saw him. The Lord gave me something too. I said, how in the world is God giving y'all always something against one another? I said, y'all got witchcraft and stuff. Y'all ain't got no divine gifts. I said, y'all should stop lying. Something spoke to me. You better find out what that something was. Some spoke to me. Watch that some. Watch how it always divides you. Never let you get together. Never let you accomplish nothing. Don't you see that? Amen. If the ant, he said, go to it, sluggard. You so slow to do everything. I said, go to the ant and pay attention. I went to Arizona and I watched the ant. I went right out there in the heat and watched the ant. Took my camera and put it on them. So I can learn some sense. That's what he told me to do. Go to him. That's right. You slow. You slow brain. Go, to <laughs> Go and see what I done got in an ant. Smaller than you. I didn't see none of them fighting and chewing up each other. But well, now one thing about it. If you don't work, the ant will eat you. You don't work, they eat you up. You got to stay active. Help us. <laughs> 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 
I heard that years ago. If you don't move, and you have been dragging around, <laughs> you're going to be eating, getting rid of you. Nobody stay there. You got to be a, a, a soldier and or something. You better be on some kind of duty. Or they're going to start chewing you. Come on, church. You can't allow that devil. Here you is, you ain't made an inch in years. Because I told him, after you done been down a long time and ain't doing nothing, do you know what else is going to set in you? Depression. Because you're going to look over your shoulder and see you ain't accomplished nothing, and the devil going to tell you, see, you ain't done nothing all this time, and you ain't going to do nothing. Do y'all hear what I say? You got to fight that devil, say, you alive, it doesn't matter what I ain't done, it's what I going to do now. How? You better shut him up. He'll put you in a hole. Read what he say. I got carried away. And behold, behold. two of them went that same day to the village called Emmaus, which was too many of y'all single women. Where are you waiting now? A hussy? You should have been a soldier. What did you wait now? A man? Some britches? You safe for buying some and hanging them on the line? <laughs> Y'all just don't pay attention to what I'm saying. I've been telling you about them britches for ye. Buy you a pillow, paint some eyes on it, and put a smile. <laughs> Hug that, baby. You safer? Some of these people got some horror stories. To just married. I heard Mother Boyd say a situation came up. She said, The more I see men, the better horses look. <laughs> that mean these men are some devils. They want a clean woman. They know she ain't got AIDS. Honey, you better talk. When y'all getting serious, you better talk. Have you been examined, brother? Okay, how many tongues you spoke in have you been examined? <laughs> have you been to the clinic? I'll go with you. Then I'll let you know whether I'm saying I do or not. I ain't committing myself till I see something. Even if you think, even if I do think this is God, have you been examined? Come on here. I've been in the church about two or three years. Mm -mm. Herpes lasts longer than that. <laughs> Yes, it do. Yes, it do. Some of them diseases they get is incurable. They have to stay on medicine. Don't speak in tongues and have a big old bubble you in. Bust it and come down to soberness. Think before you leap, honey. I don't care how good that job is and how nice that house look. You can lay there with a disease. You won't enjoy nothing. Fine house, but can't enjoy nothing in it because you're sick all the time. I tell them, I said, make sure y'all settle everything ahead of time. Talk about what you was, what you is. I said, no surprises after you get married. Then here come two children you didn't know about. <laughs> Do you get in that all the color? Yes, I do ask them. I said, y'all ain't going to bring me that stuff. Then you want me to counsel. Then you want me to pray. Why didn't you tell me about this mess before you got in it? We've been praying. All y'all been smooching and courting and kissing. 
for months. Now you're talking about y'all done come to a decision. You made a decision already. Then when you want me to stand you, stand up in front of me and say, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife to have the whole, but better for worse, a sick or, 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 or health, or richer or for poor? As long as you both say live, and you're going to say, want me to tell you, say, do you? And you say, I do. I said, you shouldn't say I do. You should say, I did. Come on here. You already took that woman. Now you won't get up here and last I do. You did it. <laughs> I make some of them so mad. They be laughing, but be mad as can be. Because I didn't call them. They be home on Lusting. Some of these brothers come to church. Honey is looking dead in this church. Getting phone numbers, you up there gleaver. Praise God, this may be the one. Maybe herpes too. You better thank. You better pray. You better say, look, I think I better talk to Mother Staxon before I get down the road. But some of them don't want you to talk to nobody. This is just between me and you, sister. God bless you, because. I believe God is doing something. And they say, he be Ashanda. <laughs> the Lord is Eo Shata, making you Eo Shata. <laughs> now, my wife, you just speak right back. Eo Shata. <laughs> but the Lord, Eo Shoto, did not Eo Tata tell me. <laughs> Some of them slick tongue speaking. Prophetic devils just to get you. You believe him because he spoke in some tongue. Come on here. Because when the Lord brought something like this here to me before, he gave me that some of them was on edge. Then, because we sneaky and hard up. Come on now, if you get saved and consecrated, you, your sex don't bother you. You ain't saved, that's why it's bothering you. You got to give yourself to God. Don't just repent at the altar. Give your, if you give that body to God, the devil can't get a hold of it. Get active in the church. Do something. And dragging and too slow. Let me tell you, you setting up any critter. Look, I, I look at them animals. When them wolves and them lions and tigers go to chasing them, they move fast. Anything that's too slow is caught. And so they look for stragglers, slow runners. They say a lion gets his prey once or twice in every 10 dashes because usually the animals are too fast. But he looks for the weak, the sick, and the old because when they're sick and when they're weak and when they're old, they slow down. You keep fooling around here letting the old man with your attitudes and feverish tempers and, and, and joking and jesting and playful and all that stuff and idling around the house, you start slowing down your interest in everything. And the wolf that you was getting away from yesterday catches you today. You know how you was when you first got saved. You know the interest that you had. You wanted to be at church every day. Hallelujah. You didn't want to hear nothing about nobody. You wanted to keep your mind stayed on God. You know how you started. Look over your shoulder. How have you slowed your tempo? You get in your Bible every day. Now it's one every now and then. The wolf is catching up with you. Sometimes ain't but one wolf 
catch and hold the prey. He's the fastest one. The others are not far behind. A little playfulness bites you. A little joking. Exaggerated time in front of a tube that ain't giving you nothing. And the next thing you know, you are slowing down. You are walking when you used to run. And then you have already been bit, so it ain't that long before after that desire has gotten you, then here come the others. And I watch them grab an animal and eat them up hollering. Animal hollering. Some of this hollering is these demons biting these people. They are not free. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Consume you to you part of that spirit. And anytime somebody rebuke you, you get upset. Because that sex is part of me and you are hitting me. You can't, have you ever wondered why would they get so upset when I say this? Because that is a part of them. That spirit have consumed them. You hit laziness and it hurt. You can see them. They shake your hand. I'm hurt. You know why? Because laziness have consumed you. Instead of being repentful and letting God get it out. You pet it. And get upset because certain things were said. Mother Boyd said it takes anointed word to bring up the spirit that you got. But it make it come up. When it come up, it wants to retaliate. And it tells you, don't love that person. They just hurt you. What that devil ain't showing you. What you teaching hurts him because it exposes him to you. And your pride won't back up and say, I'm wrong. I do have that spirit. Come on now. If you repent, he couldn't stay. If you have godless sorrow, that's why it don't take all this long time to change. We too slow to make the change. Pitying, having pity parties over what hurts you. You let me talk about a boyfriend. If you ain't consumed with having an affair, it won't hurt you. But if you consume, it hurts because you're telling me I got to give that boy up. Good as he treating me. Death can treat you good before it take you. Pleasure sin is just for a season. The Bible said some have compassion to get them out of a thing. But others pluck. That means you got to move fast. They're on fire. Anybody go to a fire ain't playing. Everybody moves fast because you got a certain amount of time. Time the whole thing is burned down. I said, God, teach me something tonight. Hallelujah! Give me a speed shot. Holy Ashana. Speed up my understanding. Speed up my desire to pray. Speed up my desire to lay out before you. Speed up my desire to give up everything. Speed it up. Hallelujah. Speed it up. Oh, the outside. Because I'm behind time. Anybody that's behind time when they get up in the morning and know they don't have about 15 to 18 minutes to get to work and they got to go about three or four miles through lights, let me tell you something. They are not playing around. I did it right here in Detroit. You mash on it. And anybody that's in front of you and you want to hurry up and get there in time, Ain't look like they driving so slow, ain't it? But when you slow, you don't see none of that, do you? 
They're taking the time, you're taking the time. But when you want to hurry up and get somewhere and the car up there drive 25 in a 35 mile an hour zone, if you don't pray, you talking to the individual through the car. That's true, man. And man and woman don't hear nothing you say. Not a word. Not a word. What is you waiting on? You driving slow and somebody want to get by you, they have a way of letting you know you too slow. They come around you and say, Pow! <laughs> come on now. We have a certain length of time. Don't you see Satan? The Bible said, knowing that he have a short time, look how he has speeded up his involvement with, with man's future. He didn't bomb the towers. Look how he's moving. He's swiftly getting certain things in place. He wants to make a last stand against Christ. The Bible said, they that followed him, followed him on white horses, they were both called faithful and true. I say, yes, Lord. He said, have you got on your horse yet? Because it's going to be a fight. Let me tell you something. Get these people out of this weak holiness that I see. It's going to be a bloodbath. Do y'all hear that? We like to have to drive around in bulletproof cars before it's over with. Let me tell you something. The devil don't want the church to take its place. God will tell you that I'm going to use you. And do you know if you don't watch your flesh, you trying to figure out how he going to do this. I'm nowhere. And God making every excuse in the book. He said accepting what he said. too slow. Ella Witherspoon prophesied during the 150 day service and some of us was blessed to be there. Many of you weren't there. But one of the last prophecies that he gave, he gave, he was looking toward Mother Boyd and before he died in the phone booth he said, this bunch is too slow! They're not going to get it. Within a week or so, he was gone. Hallelujah. First part of the 150 days. You're going to have to drop these people that's slow to go to church. I don't care if it's your mama. Mama, I love you, but you're too slow. And if you fool with slow people, it will. It's a spirit. You will get like them. I say, help us, Lord. Help us. You don't know how the changing of the God has changed in so many ways in these last few months. Do you realize that things are changed? And you got to be fast enough to accept the change. You can't be sitting here looking for things to be the same. They didn't change, honey. You're slow to accept it. Come on, things didn't change. You up there? Well, I'm praying about it. There's nothing to pray about. Don't you see it? Amen. Can't see the forest for the trees. This stuff here is evil. It'll hinder you from accepting what God's trying to do now. Do you know what the word is now? Now, faith. Now. Now. I'm going to do it now. Now. What you waiting on? Now. I'm changing you from what you was into what you're going to be now. Oh, my son now. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can't even sit around here and wait for people to accept you. Well, I'm waiting for the Lord to confirm it in somebody. Do you believe it? Has it been proven to you what your place is? Are you active? People done speeded up everything. You, you go to your phone, you've got electronic checking. Billions of dollars is taken over just through electronic checking. Methods are speeded up. Everything is speeded up, honey. And the church is still behind the horse and buggy talking about giddy up Jill. And the Concord and the ST taking off from airports. Going two or three thousand miles an hour and a half or two. Trains is going, call them bullet trains. Everything that speeded up. And the church. Daniel said, knowledge going to increase. And he saw men running to and fro, meaning speed. He saw the speed that's going on. In Daniel, in Reve, Reve, Revelation 14, he said, they saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel. It was in the heavens. The gospel now can be broadcast by one single person to the whole world. And we still slow of heart. God done called you to be a certain thing and it takes me forever to accept you. I tell you when Daniel, or rather when Ezekiel spoke in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, I tell you when he said the word of God, it wasn't no month for them bones to move and each one go to their place. I'm stirred because everything that I think may be slowing me up in any way, I want it out. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Everything, everything, everything. I don't want a thought, I don't want an imagination about you or what you done said or how you done did me. I don't want nothing in me slowing me up. This is my time. This is my hour. Say yeah. This is my time. Oh, I see ya. This is my time. This is your time. I said, God, get this spirit of procrastination from among us. Stop being so afraid to accept the place God's calling you to. Well, I ain't this. I stop saying that. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I want you to get me right quick. My time is gone, but I want you to get me. Joshua, I think that's, I want to show you something right quick. Then I'm going right back and closing because my time is gone. But oh, church, I feel this. I feel this, I feel this in my heart that I got to speed up. Not just you. Not just you. Hallelujah. Start at that uh, 6 and 11. I read this to our church and God is letting me, allowing me to read it now. Hallelujah. I know I've been slow. Uh, when God first called me off the job, I told the church, when I told the church and went to him, the Lord was calling me off the job and telling him it's time for me to hit the field. I went to looking at him, and he looked right back at me. <laughs> As if to say, oh, well, now he wants us to take care of him. 
<laughs> so I went home. His wife was asleep. <laughs> and I went on in the living room, sat down there on the couch. I said, Lord, I told them that you told me to leave the job. I know you told me that, but they don't believe me. He said, I didn't tell them. <laughs> I told you, you be quick to believe what I say. Why are you slow on the kind of who don't amen you? And God can't work with no slow ears. You know what you're going to do? You're going to slow up and trouble going to catch you. Trouble that he never had planned for you. I got in trouble too. Never planned. Because I was too slow to act on what he said. Because of fear and because of rejection from people. They wanted to say it was laziness. He didn't want to work and all that kind of stuff. And you say you slow down there. And the next thing you know, you let the devil mess seem like it's true. Because you ain't getting blessed. And you reason why you ain't blessed, you're too slow. Not because God didn't tell you. You're too slow to act. Because you're looking at, I ain't got nothing. Where am I going? I'm used to working. Come on. What am I going to do now? Mark time. If you don't say nothing, just mark time. Just keep on marching. Back to the prayer service. Back to the church. He ain't told me nothing yet, but I'm going to keep on marching. I'm going to be active. Come on here. Don't sit somewhere and go in the morning. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do. I'm going to do. That ain't helping you. And the people saying, you keep telling them, God told me, and they keep looking at you. And you look like you've been chewing on glass or something, and you're talking about God told you. I wouldn't believe you either. You don't look happy over what God said. You act like you're going to a, a, a death march or something. Come on, when God tells you something, you ought to be glad because he, he, everything you could possibly need is already figured in. God don't tell you nothing. He ain't already got the people that you need to do it. You getting upset because you're still looking at these same deadbeats. When God called you, he already had the people. All he wants you to do is be proud, pray for the ones you got, and keep them moving because the others is going to appear. No, oh, you're going to keep on looking because I did it. Ain't, ain't, ain't got nothing here. Ain't got nothing. God's sick of us telling us what we ain't got. He knew that all the time. They don't want nothing. God already knew they didn't want nothing. He wants you to stay there until he bring in the ones that do. We is psychotic. He showed me myself. I'm going around and I said, Lord, if you had sent me here, this is the early 80s. Lord, if you sent me here, uh, if Ford had sent me here, everything I would need be up here. Because most of everybody was coming out there, either on welfare, didn't have a job, or nothing. Do you hear what I said? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when I mean nothing, I mean nothing. Them offers showed it. I still got the Sunday school book. I still got the book of them offers. I said, God, I'm driving because I'm going to send my daughter some money. Here, and I'm driving down here. If Ford had told me that, 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 that come out here, everything I need would be out here. Lord, and then I went to, the Holy Ghost made me think, who sent you out here? I said, wait a minute. God sent me out here. And he got everything. Then I said, my money's here. Praise God. I started getting glad. My money's here. I went to driving that car with a new attitude. Praise God. I'm somebody. Everything I need is already here. Because if he hadn't have called me to come out, he never would have sent it. I went on back. I went downtown, Gary, to get the money order. And while I was down there, I seen the people going back and forth to the bank. And, I, and, that, and that faith that rose up in me, I said, I'm good as any of them here that's got a job. 
because I got a job too. Then I went on back to the prayer tower that night. We had service, and my God, them gas and light bills was way up there, and all them people was giving nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. And so that night I got on up. I'm just bubbling. I said, God is going to bless us. God going to put this church in the green. It was quiet just like y'all did. <laughs> they weren't hardly saying nothing. Wasn't an amen or nothing. But I had enough faith. I had enough joy. Hallelujah. That carried me on. I said, praise God. Because I felt when I accepted who I was and who sent me, my joy was full. And it didn't matter about no sad look. I went on back to the middle house and talking with Minister Tony. I said, Minister Tony, God going to do it. And he was agreeing with me. Praise God. The next day, Miss Ogletree, Tom's mother. Yeah. Old tall Tom, he was, what, 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 he was about almost seven feet. He had to, when he walked into the middle house, he had to sort of bend over. You know, he was just that tall. And so his mother came out there and I woke up that morning talking about what God was going to do. And I heard the gravel making noise. I knew a car was out there. I met Miss Ogletree. She had gave about $35, $40 before on the gas and light bill. So I didn't know to look for anything that much from her, but I was looking for it from God. I got out there and we went into the office and then she pulled out the envelope and she gave it to me. I didn't know that the Lord had spoke to her the night before when I said God going to put the church in the green, she was sitting there and she had been contemplating about sending a thousand dollars to channel 38. But she couldn't send it because God spoke to her and said, give it to him. After I said what I said, God told her, give it to him. So the next day here she come with the envelope. I didn't know what was all in that envelope. We went into the office and the next thing you know, I got the envelope and I opened it up and I've seen this check and I've seen all them zeros. I said, Miss Ogletree. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, but as long as the devil can make you slow to recognize who you are, you got to know that God sent you or told you to do what you're doing. Don't, I don't care if you got auxiliaries or anything. Don't pay attention to what people do, how they react. Just go right back on your face. Come on, God. Refresh my faith because you told me to do this. Now, I want strength. I want that joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to praise you anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah anyhow. Amen. One thousand dollars from nowhere. Just like God had given me to speak about faith, it was there. It was there before I got to Gary. It's there now for our building fund. The money is there because God sent me there. So whatever I need there is on its way. And you got to stand, having done all the stand. Help! Stand, therefore, with your loins girt about with truth, with the helmet of salvation, with the breastplate of righteousness, and make sure before you put all of that on, put on the garment of praise. Put on the garment of praise. never been broke like you thought. Every child of God is a millionaire. You ain't never been broke. You've been broke by sight. God always had your needs. But now he ain't gonna turn them over to you right away. Because there's a purification he came you through. I told him, I'm saying, I said, give me some air time. I'm cutting all these hellcats on the air. Telling these folks that every time they turn around, they can get money. That ain't true. Sometimes you go in prayer, you get broke. Yeah. 
Light bill to do, phone bill too. But if you hold on, God will give you a reverse. But don't tell him it's pie in the sky. You, God wants you to prosper. Yes, God wants you to prosper when he wants you to prosper. I didn't come up there and have no $1,500 money people giving me, be no pastor. Five, $10, $11. Now, what kind of message you going to tell me? You going to tell me I'm wrong because I had to get my $11 offering? God want to see us. I'm going to shout over $11. I hollered over $11. I hollered coming down here with holy shoes and thrifty suits right down here on this floor. You don't back up from suffering just because things don't work like you want them to. And I had suits and things that I ironed and ironed. Come on here. What did he say? Watch. About to close. Joshua 6 and 11. Come on. So the ark of the Lord could pass the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest... I'm sorry, Judges. It's supposed to have been Judges 6 and 13. I'm trying to knock some of these roots that's got us slow. We got to get it out now. This low esteem. Come on, you got to get it out of you now. God will call you an artist and you don't know even how to draw. You know what he's about to do for you? You can't even draw a straight line, good. He said, thou art an artist, thou shalt be blessed. Stretch out your hand and get your pen and go to drawing. You said, who, me? I can't even draw a straight line. God got jobs for you that you have not been educated for. Why, why won't you take your application? Oh, I, 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 ain't gonna, I know they're going to turn me. I, 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 shut up. Go down and get that application. Stop clowning. God wants you to have that job. It ain't going to mean nothing about your education. You know you need a job? Apply. You ain't the first one was trained on the job. Too many folks on there know more about the job than the person been trained in the school. God give wisdom. He give it to whosoever asks. You're a king's child. You can get wisdom can't nobody else get. You got to stand up for yourself. Because ain't nobody going to stand up for you more than you. What he said. And there came an angel of the Lord. Here come an angel. And sat on an oak. Come on. Which was Ophrah. Come on. That pertain unto Joshua. That pertain to Joshua. To Joash. Come on. That pertain unto Joash the Abiberite, and his son Gibeon. Come on. Thrust wheat by the wine press, and, he, and hid it from the Midianites. See, they ain't on welfare. Yes, devil cut him short. The devil wants you to be in a strait so that you can be depressed, upset. Then he can make you do even worse things. God will not leave the hand of the wicked on the righteous too long. Lest they stretch forth their hand to iniquity. And it's in Psalms 1. What he said. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. He appeared to him. And said unto him. And said to him. The Lord is with me. Wait thee. now. But why? Like in Luke. Am I so slow to recognize that he's right there all the time. Until I recognize it, I can't take the full advantage of the benefits that I've been called to. God spoke in the 18th chapter of Joshua and said, how long will it be ere that ye be slack to possess the land? 
You are too slow to take what is yours. Do you know there were beasts, animals, and snakes beside people in these lands? They went without fear and took them because they believed God was with them. We don't care what devil's in the committee. If he said work on it, I'm going to work with faith and believe him. I'm going to whoop any demon that comes. Appeared unto, him appeared unto him and said unto him, Look, the Lord is with thee. The Lord's with you. The mighty man of valor. Now, look what he called him. Read. And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. If the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? See, see how he's taking his time to accept it? Do you know that God had to work with Gideon a while to get him to fully accept it? You know why? You're looking at your situation. You're looking at the problems you're having with yourself and the defeat you've been having with your character. When God said he's going to do something with you, he already knew your character. Psalm 139. Huh? I know your thoughts what? Uh, I know you was a failure when I called you. But I'm going to make you a success. Help! Help! I know you was tight tongue when I called you. Moses, go tell them folks what I want you to tell them. My tongue, Lord, who made your mouth? Help! Son, na, na, na. Say yeah! Son now. Read. And where be all his miracles which our fathers told where us of? All his miracles. They're in the past. I ain't seen nothing happening lately. Come on. Say. Say. Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? Didn't he bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us. Look like I'm forsaken. I can't get a prayer through. I don't feel no quickening or nothing. And delivered us. Did God call you? Into the hands of the Midianites. You already got your bill paid. He already made provisions for your sickness before you got sick. He already made provisions for your home before it ever broke up. Come on now. He already knew you was going to get in trouble before you got in it. He already prepared to get you out. He just wants you to come on and praise him and glorify him. Magnify him, not your situation. Magnify the promise, not the problem. Go! Holy to God, I feel him. Hold on. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. He did your son now. And the Lord looked upon him. The Lord looked on him. And said. And said. Go in this thy might. I done already gave it to you. All I'm waiting on you to do is step. Hold by Shata. When you take that step, you're going to feel the power. Hold by Shata. I'm going to change you. I'm going to take out the negative and put in the positive. I know you've been having trouble, but I want you to know what your call is. So what if you're poor now? You've been called to be rich. So what if you having trouble now? You've been called to have peace. Oh, my shot But I got to let something happen so you can see what my power can do. I got to let you exercise the faith of the word that I done taught you. They had on the news. They showed it on the news. They've been talking about New York so much. And they showed it on the news while I was up in New York. I was in New York when that plane fell. And they was talking about the monarch butterfly. It leaves New Mexico and travels 3,000 miles. Hallelujah. But it had to go through a cocoon and get consecrated and get to change and then have a breakthrough and come out of that cocoon 
and it must struggle to get out. But I want you to know the ingredients to travel. I want you to know the plan that he has to go by is inside the cocoon. He develops and he has a little burr and he keeps on hitting it and he makes a way out of it. One man had a little pity and opened up the cocoon and got the butterfly out. And when it got out, it died. Because the struggle that it has to go through gives it the strength. You're in a struggle right now, but I want you to know you just keep on praising God. Keep on magnifying because it's giving you strength. It's giving you power. You may not can feel it, but it's happening. Stand up, everybody. My time is gone. You read Luke and you'll see where it says, Old fools and slow of heart to believe all that I've seen. Hallelujah. You can't tell me that all them times that Mother Boyd, Mother Stacks, Ella Stacks, Pastor Curly, all these different ministers that ministered among us didn't drop something there. But we've been slow. And when we agree in prayer tonight, to you that believe, you're going to get a shot of adrenaline. It's going to speed up everything that you've been thinking about. Things you've been thinking about doing, you're going to start acting. What does adrenaline do? It gives a charge through that body that when that man is trying to revive you, you will respond. Slothfulness casteth in a deep sleep. In the sleep of the dead. You must revive out this sleep. You are talking. You are praising God. You're doing a lot of things, but you sleep doing it. People walk in their sleep. Talk in their sleep. Amen. They've been known to walk outside doors. Go down the street. Sleep. Go back to their house. Sleep. Some have been known to kill in this sleep. Come on. Part in the world, part out. But God come to wake you out of your sleep. Shake you with this word tonight. And give you a shot. Revive you. Get your heart back on pace. Where the beat been so, so much until they can't hardly hear it. Hallelujah. I slept with a heart monitor on for the first two or three nights because, to tell you the truth, the doctors was afraid. They didn't know whether I would respond soundly or that swiftly. They watched me day and night, checking my pulse and everything, grabbing me around my neck and think, trying to see, did I have a blockage going to the brain? Amen. Because blood clots travel. Amen. I was blessed. Nothing traveled. You could pass in your sleep. Come on. God was with me. I was under attack. And any time you attack the devil, expect an attack. Just have your shield of faith because he's coming. Amen. Because he's mad. He don't want this church to have true fellowship no more than he want the rest of them. Because if you have true fellowship, the devil is going to be whooped everywhere you go. I want you to get a hold of somebody's hand because I want this shot to go through you. Some of you got ministry. Some of you got gifts. Some of you supposed to be working in auxiliaries. Everybody in this church that has been affected by the slowness to adhere, slowness. I'm gonna tell you something else. If the body, if you get a cut and you don't heal up after that cut in seven minutes at least, that's a dangerous sign. 
Amen. Because wounds that won't heal is signs of cancer. If people have hurt you in this church or hurt you outside this church, you should be quick to heal after you have a repentance from the person. Sometimes we want the person to repent a certain way and they don't. And you yet go around sick. You're not to, supposed to be slow to forgive. Don't wait for them to come back. I forgive them. Because I don't want nothing stopping me from getting what God intends for me. It could be a loved one. It could be your children. Sometimes your children do you so bad after you done went all out of your way for them. And they act like you don't exist. You go and borrow money for them and they, and they still won't pay you. Figure that you just ought to do it. Well, you got to recognize, my dear. You know your child and when you gave it to him. You know your child lied when he asked. So just strike it off to experience. Don't do it again. Come on. Because they'll use you. They won't stand up and be men and women, even though you raised them to be. They want a crutch. And they're immature. They're going to have to grow up sometime. These soft pillars is not going to help them. Sometimes they go to jail, leave them there. Be putting your house up. I didn't date it. Put our house up to get him out. Come on. Stayed in and out of jail. Put your house up. What if that rascal decided to go to Cleveland and not come back? Where you going to live? <laughs> you better do some thinking before you want to run to so quick to help these children. They ain't like they used to be. They, the street done corrupted them. Use your parents. That's the thing they have. And I'm thanking God for what he's going to do. Come on, Sister Glenn. Hallelujah.